Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com where I help you design smarter, not harder. This is official merchandise that I designed for Kid Cudi and today we're going over how I designed this in Photoshop. This was a special one because I've always loved Kid Cudi. Back in high school, he was the man and I had so many of his songs on repeat. Fun fact, my first car crash was because I was vibing to some Kid Cudi. I'm like 90% sure it was Mojo So Dope or something off that album, but I'll never forget that. So Kid Cudi definitely memorable to me uh, for better and for worse. Before we start, subscribe and like this video. You know the drill, you have to do what I say or I get sad. Let's take a look at this design in Photoshop. All right, my loves, we're inside of Photoshop, but what's this? This is my Vintone Photoshop template, you know, the super cool vintage effects template that I made and that you can have. And if you're still watching within two weeks of me posting this, it's probably still on sale for Black Friday. So go cop this for a fat discount of 30 to 50% off. And that is one of the biggest sales or the biggest sale that I do all year. So you definitely don't wanna miss that. You can get Vintone in my merchandise master kit for 50% off the week of Black Friday. I'm doing 50% off all my product bundles. And then the week after that, you can get it for 30% off where I have a site-wide discount for all my products and not just the bundles. So that'll be 30% off. You already know where to go, DuranSupply.com. Go ahead and treat yourself this Black Friday. So like I said, this is designed using Vintone. You may know this already, but Vintone allows you to composite and color your artwork with live halftoning and live dithering. So the graphic, the colors, all of it are all halftoned down to the pixel. Absolutely perfect for screen prints. And also it's all live. You can move it around, you could paint it here, you could do whatever. Everything I do in this composite group is going to be automatically halftoned. This is just a normal soft brush that I'm painting in with here. But again, it's automatically halftoning all the transparencies of this. It's also applying that nice vintage authentic texture from my warm plastic salt texture pack, which a few samples of are included in the Vintone product file. So this thing is a powerhouse for making vintage graphics and the live half toning is just ridiculous. I mean, come on, that still gets me every time. This thing is the best. And obviously this is Kid Cudi approved. So definitely want to get your hands on Vintone. So this is the original project file. And as you can see, Vintone has three separate groups here or three separate layers within the Vintone template. And that is for the three steps, really two and a half, but I'll explain that later. So the three steps that are inherent to Vintone and that is to composite your artwork. So we have the artwork composite group down here. We have the dither pattern group here, which allows you to choose your dither patterns. So you can choose from half tone, zero grain, a cool diffusion dither bitmap-esque pattern. There's a good amount in there to choose from. And then finally, we can color our graphic using the color group up here and the color compositions, which I'll get into in just a second. So let's just start with step one here, which is compositing. So I'll turn off all the colors for this and we'll open up the composite group here and check out the guts of this graphic. This project in particular, I actually named like all my layers, it's all pretty organized. And I didn't just do that for the video. It is actually all organized like this. So kind of proud of myself for that one. I'm gonna turn all these layers off though and show you pretty much my thought process for this, how I started and how I ended. So pretty obviously I had to start with Kid Cudi, this image of him that was sent to me in the brief. And I just really like this photo, it had some very cool dynamics and some very cool colors going on, which I'll turn the processing off so you can see that. So very cool colors, very cool angle, and just obviously kind of a flashy photo. And I was told that Kid Cudi likes kind of flashy and colorful designs. So I cropped him out here, probably using the select subject function, which I abused the hell out of. So you could see this layer mask for him here, which pretty much just got him out of the background, which you could see here. So I got him separated from the background and then I used some, this looks like grunge brushes to sort of just fade him out here and get rid of that really hard edge that we have at the, obviously the edge of the photo. And once I had this, I obviously really liked the photo and the placement of this and the dynamics of the graphics so far. But if this is going on a t-shirt, I need to fill in some negative space and sort of balance out how the composition looks right now. So I needed to add some sort of a background here and I wasn't really sure what to put until I remembered that I have this uh, this torn or burnt paper texture pack from Black Market. Love those guys and it really came in handy for this project and actually a number of projects following this one. So you can see I open up this torn paper folder and I have the uh, one of the burnt paper, burnt fragment, whatever they call it. I'm one of those textures from their pack. I'm using two of them here. So I just placed those right behind Kid Cudi. Let me turn the processing back on actually so you could see how I was actually viewing this. So like I said, I placed those behind Kid Cudi in such a way to sort of fill out the negative space around him and sort of frame this whole element better to make way for the text and other things that I wanted to throw in here. So I tried a lot of variations with this. This is what I ultimately ended up on 
But as you can see in this group here, I had quite a few variations going on. I had this one, which I really liked, which was sort of the city clipped into one of the torn paper elements, New York City. And I really liked that, but it, it eventually just didn't work out with the rest of the graphic, but still a cool concept that I kept in here. And slight detail, but I also sort of tried to separate Kid Cudi from the backing here, the torn paper, by adding a little drop shadow, or not even drop shadow, I painted that shadow in of Kid Cudi against the torn paper. So you can see in here, I believe there's a shadow separating Kid Cudi from the torn paper effects. Next up, the supporting elements for this, which was the text, the Statue of Liberty, and Kid Cudi's logo. So if I'm being completely honest, I was sent this project on a really, really tight deadline, and this was the last design that I've gotten to. I, I did maybe three designs before this, and I was like, fuck it, you know, I'll, I'll do one more, send one more, I wanna use my Vintone template for one of them. And I was honestly being very lazy with this graphic, but it's kind of funny that it was the only one that got approved for his tour. And that's actually happened a few times to me, so clearly, sometimes if you think less and do less, um, you get more out of it. But anyway, let's dive deeper into what's going on here. So like I said, I kind of got lazy with this graphic, and I, when I was adding the supporting elements in here, the brief actually required or suggested that I that I add a nod to New York City since this was for his show in New York. So I had to add the Statue of Liberty, obviously, that was, an, uh, that was a no-brainer. And I had to add the text live in New York City, obviously for his show that was live in New York City. So when I added these, I was like, I was like, gee, what do I do to, uh, to frame them or to give them some more context within the design? Because originally, obviously I didn't have any of the framing around here. I just had the elements as is, so there's no like backing, no cutout paper effects, no shapes behind the text here, blocking it out from the rest of the graphic. So I wanted to do that, but I was like, I don't wanna, usually I'd kind of go in depth and maybe find a cool layer style that works or incorporate the text within the graphic in sort of a interesting way. Uh, but for this one, these elements, I didn't know what to do. And I, it was like 3 a.m. and I, I kind of just wanted to go to bed. So I was like, fuck it, let's do like a punk effect. That's pretty easy. All I do is take, you know, the, the polygonal lasso tool and, and draw around here and then fill that in behind the elements. And then same thing for the, or similar thing for the text. I just take a rectangle and fill that in behind the text. So that's what I ended up doing. And it actually worked out very well, as you can see. Kind of a nice punk DIY effect. And obviously super simple to create. This is literally just my drawing with the polygonal lasso tool, or maybe it was the pen tool, I don't know. It was one of them. And then I filled that shape that I made in behind the element. And then I just added a drop shadow layer style to it to kind of add that highlight glow on the edge of the torn paper effect. Just gives it some more depth and separates it from everything else. So that's what I ended up on for the statue element here. And for the text here, same kind of deal. So you see if I go in any of these groups here, I just have the text and the rectangle behind it. And I really wanted to experiment with a bold font, but also one that had more personality than just Helvetica. So I had the Helvetica up here with the live in, um, and that's just a staple font for me, but it was too boring if I just did all the same font for that. And for New York, I wanted to spice it up a bit. So for New York, I chose whatever that is, page Takeda something something. I don't even know where I got this. But yeah, super simple layout here. I wrote the text out all in different text layers, and then I put a rectangle behind it, rotated it a bit, separated them, and tried to give it that DIY, like magazine cutout punk look. And I also had to throw in another one of the burnt fragment textures from Black Market, just to fill in the space here and make it a tiny bit more interesting. So you can see, I put that right behind the New York text. And the statue over here actually was sort of a tough or would have been a tough element to work with if it weren't for the rest of the composition. So obviously we have the statue with the one hand holding up the torch, but it's kind of awkward because we have like this sort of rectangular element and then this arm sticking out, which kind of throws off the whole element. But it worked well with this composition in particular because I had to balance out this side of the graphic we have Kid Cudi's head sticking out pretty far to the right here. And if I didn't have this statue, it just looks sort of unbalanced with Kid Cudi's head taking up most of the real estate on the right side here. That's kind of where your eyes are directed. And then the left side is sort of left empty. So I just really liked how adding the statue in here kind of balanced that out and kind of eases the dynamics on this graphic. And then lastly, I just threw Kid Cudi's logo in here, which I really like. Pretty cool logo. And I just had to include it as per the brief. So I threw that in here, gave it the same punk DIY cutout effect and threw that on the bottom right here to really balance out the composition. And I thought this looked pretty good. So once I was done with all the compositing, it looked pretty cool like this, just with the black and white. 
but I was told that Kid Cudi likes a really colorful and vibrant graphic, so you know I had to kind of style out on the colors with this. Let's go ahead and check that out in the colors group up here. So we'll close that composite group, open the colors group, and open our color composition here. So how Vintone works is pretty much each color gets its own separate group and you color that color within that group. And the colors are all stackable and also completely half-toned and dithered live. Pretty cool stuff as you can see here. Colors are all half-toned, quite the magic trick. And you just sort of paint your graphic in color by color by hand, sort of like a coloring book. So let's go back to start here. I started off with the pretty much just backing color for this. I didn't want it to be pure white. So in this color group here, I just turned it all to an off white. And to paint a color in, in Vintone, uh, you just have to pretty much paint in the mask on the layer that says paint and mask. So whatever you paint in white will affect the graphic and obviously whatever's black won't affect the graphic. So if I paint in with black here, you can see it goes from that off white to the white, which is a little hard to see obviously because they're both pretty close to white. But yeah, so to fill this all in with off white, I just turned the whole mask to white. Next up, the Statue of Liberty. This was actually edited after the fact. I originally didn't even color in the Statue of Liberty. It was a suggestion or rather a revision made by the art director that I was working with this on and a good one at that because I really like how it ended up. So like I said, in Vintone to paint in the color, all you do is paint in the layer mask on the layer that says paint and mask. So you see when I take my black brush here and I paint out of that mask, uh, we're painting out the blue that I originally painted in. And of course, it's all perfectly half-toned. And I'm using a soft brush here so I can get as sloppy as I want, really. And to set the color of this to blue, all I had to do was open up the layer styles of this color group here. So I chose a blue for this, but obviously could change that to any color that I want. Next step, the actual uh, graphic here, Kid Cudi, which is the, you know, obviously main element. And I put all of Kid Cudi's color groups in one big group. So we have the teeth here, which I put on top, and I'll get into that later. And then we have the whole rest of him. So his hair, the blunt or the joint that he's holding, his skin and his coat. Let's turn off all these and just go with the coat for now. I believe that's what I painted first. So same deal here. So you can see that I messed a little bit more with the layer mask for the coat, and that's because I didn't want to get any of the yellow color on the text here, so they're live in New York and whatnot. So if I turn off all of these layer masks, you can see what I originally painted in, and then how I masked that to just Kid Cudi, and then how I masked out the text and the statue. And his jacket was originally a light brown, but like I said, Kid Cudi wanted some colorful stuff, so I thought yellow worked pretty well for this. And you can see that I painted really out of the lines here. So it's creeping onto his skin and onto his face, but it doesn't matter because I eventually was going to paint in his skin here, and all the colors in Vintone are stacked. So once I paint his skin here, it kind of takes over any of the colors that I painted over in here for the coat. So same exact deal on this skin group. Let's open that up. You can see where I originally painted sort of a sloppy selection here. And then I layer mask that using this group up here to just get all that color within the lines of Kid Cudi. This is the selection of him obviously that I had from before. And then the rest is pretty self-explanatory. I just rinsed and repeat that coloring process. So for the joints, for his hair as well, which in the original photo was blue just like this, but I was really happy about doing this in Vintone where I could color his hair a nice bright color and also have it fade out pretty nicely here with those half tones that Vintone does so well. And lastly, I just needed to do some touch-ups on this, like his teeth and I believe this ring here. So this group right here does that job for me. Also his pupils right here needed that widen. So like I said, the colors are stacked in Vintone, so it was easier to just do this on top of everything rather than not paint it in, in for example, the skin group. So I just made the color for this, the off-white that I was using, and I painted in the ring here, the teeth and his uh, not his people, the whites of his eyes. So that's pretty much it. And like you just saw, the coloring of this graphic within Vintone, or the coloring within Vintone in general, is a pretty unique process. And it's done this way because I wanted this template to be completely suitable for screen print. So all of the colors within this graphic are dithered and half toned down to the pixel. So there is not a single shred of transparency here. So this is going to be, or was an absolute breeze to color separate, which I'm going to go over the process for that now. So after I'm done with the whole graphic, my last step is usually just to do some post-processing in the form of messing a little bit with the colors by means of color separating it. So separating out all the different colors within this graphic, putting it on its own layer, and then messing a little bit with the colors all in unison to get a nice harmony between them. So I'll show you how I do that right now. So once I'm done with this, I just merge everything with no regard to the background or anything. So that's Command, Option, Shift, E, and that's going to make a flattened duplicate of our entire document. I'll hide the Vintone group here. And next up, I just take my magic wand and I make sure anti-alias is unchecked because this design 
doesn't need that because it's all pixel by pixel. If I turn anti-alias on, it's going to select things that we don't want it to select. I select out the background for this first. So I select the black, just delete that out. And now we have this graphic completely separated from the black background here. And the next step is just to separate all the rest of the colors out onto their own layer by the same process. So what I do is I'm gonna first put this in a group with Command G and I go into here and select out say the yellow and right click and put that on its own layer using layer via cut. And I do that for every single color after that. So I'll hide that just for better visibility. The blue, same process, select it with my magic wand, layer via cut, and eventually you'll have a group, which I have up here, that is full of all the colors within the graphic on their own layer and that which you can mess with the colors of separately and pretty much just finalize the design. And that's pretty much it. This is what I sent off to Bravado, the music company that I was working with to do the merchandise for Kit Cudi. Originally, I had designed this, as you can see, on a black background. When they got the file, they did some adjustments. They actually printed this on a white hoodie, which I wasn't that much of a fan of, but you know, I take what I can get. Nonetheless, super happy I got to work on this project. Shout out to Carlos, the art director who had me hop in on this. It was an absolute delight to be able to design merch for the guy who was pretty much the soundtrack to a lot of fun times that I had in high school. And also for him to call it great merch and then throw it out to the crowd. Pretty cool stuff. Remember, I couldn't have made this without Vintone. So if you wanna make graphics just like this, go ahead and pick this up on my website. Would also recommend picking up or at least checking out the merchandise master kit, which has Vintone and a number of other products that I believe will help you master your merchandise game. And that is 50% off for Black Friday. So go spoil yourself. I wanna see one of you watching this video right now to eventually make some merch for fucking, I don't know, the Smashing Pumpkins or someone else using Vintone or any of my other products that I make to help you speed up your workflow and create better merchandise designs. Remember to like and subscribe if you've got any value from this and turn on that notification bell if you want to be notified when I upload more videos just like this. And go sign up for the mailing list at the bottom of my website to receive any news or discounts for any of my design products. And that's all. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.